In this section, we're going to be talking about material settings specifically. I'll open up my object properties again. This time we'll work in perspective. I'll choose maximize. So we've got the whole viewport. Create a sphere. So here we have it. Now with this we want to be on the material settings page because again the object property settings even if I select a color only affects the shaded preview. I can choose by layer, basic, or plugin. I'll choose basic. Right now the color is set to white, gloss set to zero. We'll take a look. So we've got the bland flat gray. Change this to red. Gloss finish, we'll crank up to 70. Plastic finish, we can choose plastic or metallic. We'll try plastic finish first. There you can see we've got a nice glow there. Now let's try metallic. As you can see we've got a faint metallic halo here. There's a transparency slider as well. Texture, bump map, and material name. Let's just call this ball for our material. It can be anything you want. It's just to help you sort through materials. Texture. If a picture of a forest and the snow here that I'm going to use, any picture file will work. A bump map, you can select again any picture file. Generally black and white is better for a bump map, but this will work fine. And now notice that I've selected these pictures for texture and bump map. My gloss finish, transparency, and color settings are going to be overwritten. So let's take a look. So there, as you can see, the picture is wrapped around my sphere. You can see the bump map here at work. It looks very rough, three-dimensional. Now, if I delete my bump map, render again, you'll see that it'll come out a lot smoother. Okay. Now if I delete my texture map as well, I can then crank up my transparency. And as you can see, we can sort of see through it. The red color and the metallic gloss is also applied. Material names can also be applied by layer, which we'll get into when we talk about layers and how to use them.